Now, let's move on to our top story. And Rishi Sunak was scrambling last night to fend off a leadership challenge from a former cabinet minister who tore into his chances at the general election. Sir Simon Clark, who only a year ago pledged his full support to the prime minister, has now submitted a letter of no confidence and called on MPs to oust him. Uh, writing in The Telegraph, he said, our country is on the brink of being run by Keir Starmer's Labour Party for a decade or more. We have a clear choice. Stick with Rishi Sunak, take the inevitable electoral consequences and give the left a blank check to change Britain as they see fit. Or we can change leader and give our country and party a fighting chance. And today at Prime Minister's Questions, Keir Starmer was quick to mock Rishi Sunak for continuing disloyalty in his ranks. Does he actually understand why his own MPs say he doesn't understand Britain and that he is an obstacle to recovery? And we've seen this story time and time again with this lot. Party first, country second, safely ensconced in Westminster. They get down to the real business of fighting each other to death. Yeah. Lots of fighting chat going on today, yeah, isn't yeah. there? Well, Joe Twyman, Deputy Director of Polling Fund Delta Poll, is still with us, and we're also joined by Henry Hill, Deputy Editor at Conservative yeah. Home. I'm going to come to you, Joe, because I think the big question here is, would they stand a better chance, the Conservatives, under a different leader? Well, it seems like only last week I was here talking about crazy over-analysis based uh, on polling <laughs> done in The Telegraph. And here we are again doing exactly the same thing. <laughs> it's a merry-go-round. It's a massive, massive oversimplification to say that would be the case. Uh, the best you could hope for, probably, by historical standards, is a six-point uh, boost. That's what, uh, that's what Boris Johnson received when he took over from Theresa May. And that's really the largest boost that any Conservative has received when there's been a change of, uh, change of leadership. Ask ourselves, is whoever is taking over, Simon Clark or, or whoever, are they Boris Johnson? I think it's highly unlikely that, uh, that they would be viewed so favourably. Instead, I imagine the situation would be very similar to what it was when Liz Truss was replaced by Rishi Sunak, which is that there's a minimal bounce, but actually nothing in terms of lasting change. Uh, so we are, Joe. Let's bring in uh, Deputy Editor of Conservative Home, uh, Henry Hill. Uh, hi, Henry. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what I think the problem here is, uh, you know, the Tory party need a new leader like they need a hole in the head. I mean, the look of that would be terrible uh, and would inflict, I think, probably terminal damage on the party. However, I think what Sir Simon Clarke uh, wrote, uh, which is being criticised publicly from all sides by Tories, a lot of them privately totally agree with him. Uh, this is the problem. Uh, what uh, the Tories are saying and what they're thinking are two different things. Well, the Tories are a long way behind in the polls, uh, less than a year out from a general election, and those polls no sign, show no sign of improving. So, of course, discipline is fraying, people are getting panicky, they're looking at their seats. And there is this instinct in some quarters that something, you know, has to be done. Something is better than nothing. But the problem for would-be challengers for the leadership is that there's no prince or princess over the water. There's no one who's an obvious candidate with a clear plan. So calling for Rishi Sunak to go is not calling for a particular alternative. It's just calling for a leadership contest. Now, think how that would go. You know, we'd have to have, presumably, if there was more than one candidate, a full contest like you had with Liz Truss versus Rishi Sunak. That took lumps out of the party. It was an awful process. And at the end of that, there would be extraordinary pressure on whoever it was, I think the third un you know, unelected by the nation prime minister in this parliament, to have an early general election. So I don't see how this is a remotely realistic plan. And I suspect that's why Sir Simon Clark is out on his lonesome. But is it not remotely helpful to the Conservative Party either, is it? I mean, whichever wise egg, and I think some of us know who it is, uh, decided that this was a great idea, plastering this sort of anarchy within the Conservative ranks over front pages of uh, well-read newspapers, especially among the Conservative grassroots. They're not helping the party, they're hindering it, surely. Yeah, no, this kind of, the Conservative Party is already facing an incredibly difficult general election. It will, the best it can really hope for at this point is to fight a disciplined, defensive campaign, ruthlessly focused on those marginal members of its coalition that it can persuade to stay on board. Now, 
that necessarily involves a lot of MPs losing their seats. And those MPs are therefore not on board with that kind of strategy. So you get demands from the red wall MPs that the prime minister has to go all out for the red wall. You've got MPs in the so-called blue wall, you know, formerly safe Tory seats in the south of England who are looking nervously at the Lib Dems. They want the prime minister to go all out for them. And therefore, there is going to be public dissension in the ranks. But it does not help. It is only going to hinder the Conservative Party's prospects, because ultimately most voters, they don't follow the minute ins and outs of Westminster, but they will get the general impression of a party that's tearing itself to pieces, and it's not going to reassure them that that's the party that should be in government. Uh, let's go back to you, Joe. Poll-wise, a poll came out yesterday saying that uh, Labour was on 45, uh, um, uh, the Tories on 22, and Reform UK on 12. Uh, poll, in terms of polling results, uh, is that a position from which the Tories uh, can come back from? I mean, can they possibly overturn that massive polling majority? Uh, and if so, how? Well, in the last uh, 10 years, we've learned that nothing can be ruled out in British politics. But if you go back to... You have to go back to December 2022... For the, sorry, December 2021, for the last time the Conservatives were ahead in any published poll. You have to go back to September 2022 for the last time. They weren't double digits behind. And so the long-term trend is extremely bad for the Conservatives. And as each day goes past and they don't close that gap and those days turn into weeks and those weeks turn into months, the challenge of closing the gap sufficiently just increases. Now, you would expect, by historical standards, that the polls would narrow in the run-up to a general election. Uh, in the run-up to 1997, for instance, Labour on 57% in some polls, and then eventually the Conservatives clawed it back to get 30% of the vote and, uh, and held on to 165 seats. And I imagine that they will probably do better than that this time around. But that would still mean an extremely good performance by Keir Starmer and a Labour majority. What about one of those incendiary moments that can change the course of an election, you know, like uh, Gordon Brown's bigoted woman moment, something like that? Is it possible that Keir could do something uh, so disastrous that it might uh, turn the ship around? Well, in a close election campaign, as that particular campaign with, uh, with Gordon Brown was, yes, it might potentially make a difference. But we're not talking about a close campaign at the moment. We're talking about a lead of between 17 and 22 points, depending mm. on which poll you look at. And so that's the, the difference between Labour getting a majority of over 100 and Labour getting a majority of over 150. And so it would have to take a cataclysmic change in terms of specific events, the like of which we have not seen in British politics in an election campaign, for that change to happen. And really, the only people that can bring about a change of that magnitude at any time are the government themselves. Henry, as deputy editor of Conservative Home, one imagines that you've really got your ear to the ground when it comes to where the grassroots are at on all of this. Are the Tory faithful starting to look and shop around and thinking, well, actually, they're not that faithful anymore, given the mess that the party's in? Well, I mean, I don't think the actual Conservative Party membership um, will be shopping around. I think what's happening there is that you're increasingly getting people thinking about after the election, assuming that the party do lose it, um, for the bun fight that's going to follow. There's going to be a huge battle over why they lost, why the, why the party managed to did so little to move the part of the country in a conservative direction despite being in office for 14 years. But certainly I think that conservative voters, apart from you're getting down to the very hardcore of the conservative electorate now, because essentially, no matter what version of the Conservative Party you support, whether it's for low taxes, whether it's for controlling immigration, whether it's for law and order, whatever else, the, the government isn't really delivering for any of those groups. And now it's getting to the point with their latest campaign against the so-called economically inactive, they're even going after the comfortably retired, who are one <laughs> of the groups that the party has basically oh bent the arc of the universe around to look after. So, no, they, they definitely they, they are in a really difficult place in that they haven't delivered. And the only thing that they would really help them potentially is if you think about how Theresa May threw away the 2017 election, uh, she did throw away a, a polling lead of 20 points. But again, one, she did that in government. And two, she did that by going big on trying to pay for social care. And Starmer has shown no sign of being so bold. Uh, Henry, you don't get to come on Crosstalk today with ask, without answering one very yeah, specific question. Is. You know you know what it is. Uh, would you fight for the country? Yeah, if the country was under it. Was, if the country was under, uh, under attack, of course I would. Good, good, good man. Good, good. Thank you Rejoining very much, Kevin Henry. I, then. You are hereby recruited. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much.